To V and I, canyoneering was love at first sight. So as soon as our crazy cousin An invited us on a trip to Death Valley, we packed up the car and headed out. This is an A to B style canyon, so you're gonna need two cars. You're gonna leave one at the exit and drive one all the way back to the beginning. We had heard a lot of interesting things about the canyons in Death Valley. Everything from the long approaches to the natural rock anchors. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't the least bit concerned about using those. After driving for a couple minutes on the dirt roads, On spotted the marker that signaled the beginning of the hike into the canyon. The approach to this canyon is no joke. It comes in right around 2.6 miles with 800 feet of elevation gain. We also ended up finding this cool little tunnel, but it ended up just being a pipe that runs straight through a mountain. After a fairly easy start to the hike, that 800 feet that I talked about a second ago started to kick in. V and I have experienced some fairly steep approaches on these small number of canyons that we've done so far, but this was one of the first ones that I could almost say had some borderline rock climbing involved. We took quite a few breaks on our way up, and one of the best things about all the climbing is, the higher you get, the better the view is. After what seemed like a small eternity of rock scrambling and climbing, we reached the end of the trickiest part of the approach. All we had to do now was make our way up and across this slightly slippery ledge and make our way up one more hill and we were done with elevation gain for the day. From here you're going to get a nice little break and chance to catch your breath. You're going to be making your way about a mile and a quarter down a wide open wash that goes through some super colorful mountains. They reminded us a lot of Artist's Palette which is also in Death Valley except for these ones are not anywhere near as known and I don't know too many people that would take this much of an effort to get to them. I spotted what I thought was the first rappel of the day, but it ended up being just a down climb. The first rappel is still a little more than half of a mile down the canyon. Finally, after another wash, we arrived at rappel one and got our first look at a rock anchor. The first rappel in Scorpion Canyon is 135 feet long and it is broken up into two stages. After we harnessed up, it was time to give the webbing and the rocks a very thorough inspection. After the rocks were back together, our new friend Shri tossed the first rope of the day and Aaron volunteered to go first. Being that this was our first time ever rappelling on a rock anchor, I was a little bit happy to see that the first stage of this rappel was only about 25 or 30 feet. After the first rappel, you have to kind of awkwardly work your way down a fairly long ledge to the second rappel, which is just a little longer and right around 30 feet. Last but not least was our fearless leader on, and once he was down, we packed up and headed on. From the bottom of Rappel 1, you are about a 700 foot walk over to Rappel 2, but it is not a flat walk over. You are going to have to navigate a bunch of down climbs, everything from 6 feet to 20 feet. Some of them are a bit on the technical side, but nothing is too crazy. It wasn't too long before we found ourselves at Rappel 2. This one is pretty cool because it kind of drops into a cave and it comes in right around 35 feet. You can also climb your way up to the top of the rock arch here to get both a nice view down the canyon and a great view of anyone who goes rappelling down before you. After finishing rappel 2, you're a nice and easy 230 yards from rappel 3. This is the second biggest rappel of the day and it comes in at 105 feet. It is fairly easy and straightforward with the exception of the two gaps in the middle that you can see here. Rappel 4, which is the biggest one in Scorpion Canyon, is only about 40 yards from Rappel 3, but it may take you just a second to get there because there are a couple of down climbs that you need to navigate on the way. After making it through all the down climbs and squeezing through a couple gaps, you will arrive at this beast of a rappel that comes in at 150 feet. 
On was the only one from our group that had done this canyon before, so I think he knew what to expect, but the rest of us had to pick our jaws up off the floor as we looked over the edge of this one. This rappel does have a small ledge towards the middle that you can use if you're tired, but I guess it's not quite big enough for this one to be considered a multi-stage. It also has just a little bit of overhang at the bottom, not quite enough to do a free hang, but just enough to keep things interesting. And here's a view from the bottom up to give you a sense of scale and show you just how impressive Rappel 4 really is. One interesting thing about Scorpion Canyon is it actually has two Rappel 4s. We went left at the split to do the 150 footer, but if you go right you are doing a two stage 180 foot Rappel. And if that wasn't impressive enough, it supposedly has 70 feet of overhang as well. I'm not sure where exactly the 180 foot rappel takes place, but it's somewhere in here. After rappel 4, you have about a 3 quarter of a mile walk to rappel 5, which is a simple 25 footer. This is one of the smallest rappels of the day and probably one of the easiest as well. After we all finished Rappel 5 with ease, it was time for another nice long walk down a sandy wash. We had three more rappels to do and they were all over 50 feet. At this point the canyon really starts to open up and give you a beautiful view of the basin below. Along the way you're going to have to navigate just a couple more tricky down climbs before you finally reach Rappel 6. This one comes in with a height right around 50 feet. The only tricky thing about this one is the big flake at the top on your right side. If you're not careful, you'll end up banging into it or getting your foot stuck in the crack. After everyone finished Rappel 6, we packed it up and headed on. We only had two Rappels to go, but we were going to have to move fast because we were running out of daylight. Rappel 7 is really cool and it comes in at right around 70 feet. It starts off pretty regular, but then it slopes in just enough to give you a nice amount of free hang on the way down. As our group came down one by one, I looked over my shoulder and saw the colors of sunset starting to fill the sky. We all had our headlights and we could finish it in the dark if we had to, but we were going to race the sun and it was going to be close. Luckily for us, it's a fairly short and easy walk to the last rappel of the day, rappel 8, which comes in at 60 feet. We could all breathe a small sigh of relief at this point because it looked like we were going to have enough time and you could practically see the car from the top of the rappel. After checking on this very artistic looking rock stack, V called dibs that she wanted to go down first. Besides being around 60 feet high and starting in a little bit of a channel at the top, this is another pretty standard rappel and it shouldn't be too challenging. Aaron was the last one of the group to come down and he couldn't have made it a second too soon. By the time we packed up the rope, it was getting really dark. Scorpion Canyon was a ton of fun and I definitely would not mind running it again. With that being said, canyoneering can be dangerous and if you want to try it for yourself, I highly recommend taking a class. If you enjoy our adventures, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we make new videos. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for more wild adventures, head on over to our website, thatadventurelife.com.